I have started the recording. Welcome to the March 15th uh, Chaos DEI meeting. If you could add yourself to the minutes and anybody who's kind of on while I'm doing this meeting, if you could add the minutes to the chat for the new people who arrive, that would be great. Um, and today's question is your favorite season of the year. Mine is certainly summer. Because it's summer. Yeah. Winter can be. It depends on where you are, as I've learned with winter. There can yeah. be winter places. <laughs> no, I mean, where I live, it's like we we get 70 degree weeks in the middle of winter. So it's not nearly as bad as it was when I lived in Minnesota. And, you know, once winter starts up there, it just doesn't stop. <laughs> right. So you get the you get the cabin fever. Yeah, summer. All right. We got a couple summers. All right. Sean loves all, all season except winter. Yeah, that's what exactly, you know, exactly. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's do the let's see it was right at the top of the agenda, Sean. So badging yeah. bot update. Can you kind of tell us what's going on there? Enoch, um, do you want to share it, it effectively? I'm not sure why it was 41%. It looked to be fixed when Enoch and I went through it and all of the check boxes weren't checked in your review Matt, for whatever reason so that's why it wasn't 100 um but it looks like Enoch went through after he and I hung up and checked all the boxes and closed it so um but all the issue was that all the boxes weren't checked for some reason okay so so that that from the round of OSSNA applications that have come in yeah seems to have happened a few times, like a couple people have been asked to go back and recheck their boxes. So maybe there's something, it, would it be possible that like you could, a reviewer could check all their boxes and those would be lost somehow? Um, I mean, it's a web session. So I, I suppose it's possible if you close your browser before it's posted back to GitHub. But okay. I mean, I, when we, you know, and I were, you know, of course we were triggering it, but we kept playing with yeah. it. and. They went up and down based on the number of boxes checked and it okay. got to 100 when they were all checked so i, I think so they were yeah i mean if things it's pot yeah i think it's possible because it's it's relying on a restful api and posting back to github and if for some reason you know your browser decides to not i don't know send the post back to github or whatever then that could be possible okay that's the only explanation i have on that question it's a okay. theory though i don't have proof <laughs> <laughs> okay no problem um okay well so so it sounds like it's working under mm -hmm. the assumption that everything is checked so that's good yeah okay okay well thanks for kind of um poking around yeah poking around and taking care of that all right um good and then just kind of on this while we're here badging about update just so people know there there just are a lot of um submissions coming in right now with Open Source Summit North America and all of the co-located events associated with OSSNA. So if you're a reviewer, thanks for doing the reviews. If you're not a reviewer and you'd like to help out, that would be great too. Um, so anyway, I just, I think we're all kind of keeping our eyes on this. Um, okay, cool. Um, project badging update. I do just want to give a small update for people in the project badging meeting that we had earlier this morning. Um, we talked about the DEI.MD file and the kind of where we landed was that we would have a DEI.MD file that is identified by the badge. So um, for example, it would be uh, dei.bronze.md and then dei.silver.md and dei.gold.md and dei.platinum.md and the reason for this is because the markdown file continues to grow over time and um, the, we talked to Sean I think it would be easy enough to process the four different markdown files 
So that shouldn't be an issue, but um, that was kind of where we landed. So if you have comments or questions on that, um, you feel free to, to ask or speak up. So, so we are we are asking them to create multiple markdown documents. We would ask them to just replace their bronze one with the silver one, or rename the file. Yeah, they could just simply rename the file. Okay. So they wouldn't they wouldn't have all four of them in there. They would just have the most current one. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I did make a comment in that I was I was late to that meeting, so I I did want to discuss the the markdown file, and I I did add a comment. Uh, after the fact. Okay. What was the kind? I can go back. Uh, it's about those the the four those four base metrics. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not convinced those are the kind of the four uh, basic metrics that would that we should use for bronze. And uh, and I'm kind of I'm thinking back to Don's Don's example of a starter model for OSPO. Mm -hmm. So when I think of four metrics that would help me understand the DEI of a project when I when I initially look. The four that we have now aren't necessarily those metrics. I think two of them two of them fit, uh, but I kind of I question uh, the uh, two of the others. Can you do you have suggestions for two others? I mean, the only reason I ask is we're pretty moving. Like this has been out for quite a while, and if we want to reopen that conversation, we probably want to do it sooner rather than later. Because, uh, so if you pull up that document real quick, I did suggest uh, two others. Uh, however, I don't believe the metrics exist, so we would have to create them. Okay, I mean the the chat. Okay, um, okay. Uh, you want me to, I can drop. You want me to drop the link in the I can chat. Okay. We had talked about accessibility. I mean, okay. So what's our timeline, John, for, you know, for anticipated release of this? Um, um, we have a we have a timeline. I mean, we're still targeting um, June right now. Okay. Um, but I have to actually look at the schedule that um, Ruth drew up to make sure that I'm right about that. Is that just for the bronze part, or is it for the whole thing? It would just be for the bronze. Okay. At first, yeah. I have to. Excuse, excuse me, I have to go find the to go find the actual information to be precise. But I will um find no, that's that. fine. If it's just to get an idea, because if we're proposing two new metrics, we have to not only build those, but kind of, I guess we'd need to talk about them and then talk about inclusion here. So um Kevin, do you do you have a thought on the process? To, to do this? Do you want to talk about it in the badging meeting in two weeks? Do you want to? Uh, we could. We could also bring it into common if the metrics need to be created. Uh, those metrics, we could we could probably knock those out in common. Yeah. Uh, and maybe uh, seeing as my my thought on this is 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 really kind of related to how we looked at that the OSPO starter metrics, right? So. That, that mindset we had with with those and uh, so maybe we maybe we get Don's input on that as well. So you're okay. suggesting removing which ones are you suggesting removing? So the the recognizing contributors metric that seems like a metric that would be at a higher level. You know, maybe it's a, maybe it's part of the gold. Uh, and then the project burnout metric, I am not sure. I'm not sure that one is directly related to a DEI, uh, a DEI statement. Uh, so at that point, I, I look at what I, I look at what I would look like if I look for when I was joining a project, and I would look for I would look for kind of transparency of communication and governance. 
I would look for kind of that that welcomeness or newcomer experience, what that looks like. Uh, I would look for inclusive leadership to me looks a little bit like path to leadership. So I think that that fits as well. And then I would also look at kind of uh, some facet of accessibility, right? So can I can I actually get in and contribute? So those are kind of those four things that would kind of gives me gives me an idea that I'm welcome and that the project is is open for me to uh, participate in, right? So at a at a very base level, those are kind of those four things that that kind of open the door for me. Okay, so it would be project accessibility is that right yeah some facet of accessibility and I, I don't know if that uh exists currently um we i i want to say yes but i'm not going to find it real fast here but it would be uh project accessibility not uh accessibility related to the artifact or the, the software okay so the proposal is to remove project out hmm. recognizing if, yeah and then replace with project project accessibility and then what else uh transparency like uh communication transparency right what does that mean? Uh, so are the are the project discussions happening in public places? Are they can I can I be a part of those discussions? Okay. Right? So if the if those if that communication isn't happening in a public place, it's not transparent. And it would be uh, it kind of excludes participation from a, a group of people or for a group of people, right? Okay, so I mean, these are, I think, um, these metrics, I don't know if you see those in the screen, but maybe we could add these to the common agenda for tomorrow. I mean, they're, I think they're good metrics anyway, irrespective of like getting into here or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so if, if project burnout was to stay, I think it's kind of a similar situation where maybe that's kind of a high level. That's a high level. Maybe that's part of the platinum badge. So why? Could, let's add. Where I am? Let's. Can you? In the background here, can you add these to the common agenda tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Just those two comments. Okay. Not bad. Okay. 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 And and just to be and just to be clear, I'm not saying that those are the the definite four that uh, that would need to be there. I'm just saying I, I think we should examine what those four would be, and those are those are kind of the four that I think should be there. Uh, well, so I think let's just do this in two like two parallel streams. One is just to simply help start building these two metrics out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Like that, that needs to happen kind of on one path. And then as we build those out and gain a little bit of clarity, I think that'll help with the discussion of, you know, what this final list needs to be. Okay. And then perhaps we can, to your point, like move this and, or these two, you know what I mean? I don't know if you see my screen, but the burnout and recognizing contributors down, you know, where I just have holders right now, you know, in the later ones. 
Can somebody put a link in the chat for just into the minutes? Yeah. I'll find him. Okay. I'll try and follow along. I'm playing the home game here with them. <clears throat> oh, but he wants it for the DEI statement doc. So. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I think I just pasted that. It's. Yeah, let me get that for you. Oh yeah, no, you're okay. Yeah, I got that. I went. I had. That's what I was on. Strangely enough, I will send it in chat now. So the first one, Justin, is the agenda, and the second one is the statement. John, that okay. That's looking at right now. Okay. Great. Um. Great. Any other comments or questions about the project badging? No, I'm just I'm looking to create a, a space for this. Is this stored under event badging right now, Matt? In the chaos. What? Where is so um, I want for the DEI project badging. I just want to make sure I put a link to this. I have it in the minutes. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so again, any other comments? on this all right great uh okay cool um i do want to i've been kind of circulating this idea in a variety of different working groups and i just want to make sure um, it's talked about in all the working groups to get feedback and people's reaction um so one of the things that that we're talking about, or at least that we did talk about yesterday in metrics model working group and the community call was about um, chaos user communities. So the idea here is that we have currently the OSPO user community, um, which is a partnership with the to do group where we have a bi weekly meeting and we talk about metrics that metrics and metrics models that are um, helpful in the context of really corporate open source program offices. So that's that red circle there. We're also in discussions with um, folks in universities who also have university open source program offices. And I think the metrics and metrics models and questions that they have are a bit different from those in a corporate setting. And so that's that purple one right there. Um, we've also been reached out to by folks from NumPy and Pandas about doing something similar with the scientific software and trying to understand the health and sustainability of scientific open source software projects. So it's a science um, user community. Yeah, so that's yeah. great, Matt. I think that is what I, I suggested at the beginning of this year. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's, that's really great. We seem to be getting quite a bit of interest from people who want to use the metrics and metrics models and software, but don't necessarily want to be involved in the day-to-day -day <laughs> workings of chaos. Yeah. And so that's that's really what these are. So I think in the in each case, in the in the OSPO um, user community, what we would do is kind of the second point, led by people <clears throat> experienced in that specific domain. So in the, the red circle, uh, Don Foster is, is leading that. So Don is also familiar, very familiar with the CAS project. Um, but Don would be leading that along with Anna to kind of lead those discussions. Um, in the university, in the, the purple one here, um, Saeed from Carnegie Mellon and Stephanie from Santa Cruz, UC Santa Cruz, are have agreed to lead that community as well. Virtual, yeah, and then in the science, um, we've talked with some folks again in those communities that I mentioned who would who would kind of lead those efforts. And that means like set the agenda, kind of manage the conversation, identify metrics and metrics models that would be relevant um, for their particular user community. 
So these are really led by by people who are um, experts or experienced in those specific domains, not necessarily, um, yeah, program managers of sorts, and and people who can kind of speak speak to everybody who has an interest in that area. Um, so I think it's important that, that these user communities wouldn't necessarily connect with the details of the chaos project, like the kind of the low level details, again, that day-to-day -day operations, there is a bit of a separation there, but we would host these, sorry, excuse me, we would host these communities um, in the chaos project through chaos, like Zoom, so this channel, um, Google Docs, we would support that. We can provide GitHub repos as needed. I'm not sure how often those would be needed. Um, a Slack channel, for example, where the conversation about community health really stays here in the chaos project. The chaos project itself would still continue to run and operate uh, the exact same way. I think the thing that we do need as well, though, is a liaison who understands, as Ildiko put it real well yesterday in the community call, kind of the, the workings of the chaos project and the processes by which the chaos project kind of operates. Um, so when there's, say, requests from a OSPO user community or a science user community, requests for new metrics or requests for new metric models, um, or a request to, say, participate in chaos con, you know, like have an afternoon workshop, um, as a, in association with ChaosCon, like the liaison would help kind of serve as that that person who can um, provide insight to the user community on on how to best connect with chaos resources, um, and just kind of provide that link. Um, so we would need to identify people who are familiar with the chaos processes for each one of these different user communities. I don't think it would be one person that would do all of them. I think it would be perhaps in this model, three people who do <laughs> three different ones. Yeah, that's fair enough. Is that a formal assignment or more informal? I, I don't know. So I, I haven't um, I haven't written down the uh, like the responsibilities for it. That came up yesterday in the community call. You know what I mean? Like how it, what the responsibilities would be and how we would recognize um, that person. I'm thinking it's kind of formal. At least that was my first thought. I don't know what, what other people think as well. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, um, this just kind of thinking out loud here because yeah. in the community where I'm working with, with Fedora, we have this model where we have a lot of different user communities and folks who are doing stuff with our, our project, but in the project leadership and governance, we still want to make sure those folks feel connected and tied in. So I think there's a couple of ways that you can go about something like this. In Fedora, we have a, um, like in the engineering, we were a pretty large community. So we have an engineering steering committee and like a, what we call Mindshare steering committee. So those are different, elected groups so folks you know there's an election process someone uh, runs from different parts of the project so say people who are doing in a specific group so here it might be the university or science or ospo user communities and so this provides kind of a platform for those folks who are doing that work to have some group who's connected back to the upstream project um so I guess this is kind of the one one model of doing it, and I, I like this one because it takes kind of a downstream, like pulling people from downstream going upstream, which I think can also help level people up and build people closer to the community and learn more about it and help take those things back to their their group. Um, depending on like what capacity you have, like maybe you have a ton of people who can help out with this kind of stuff and are ready to work with the university and science and OSPO user communities, then maybe that's one consideration. But if there's a, like a very large user community, that could be one way, like having either an elected or appointed role, like the group could select someone amongst themselves to kind of check back in a monthly round table with all the user communities to understand like what, um, what are what are the common needs across all the user communities? How can chaos help support all the user communities a little bit better? And each person can kind of bring their own perspective from the, the different groups or different parts of the 
you know, OSPO or science or university user community. So that's one way that we do it in Fedora. And I, I like that approach for a larger community because it's a little more decentralized and it still keeps that connection. So all those smaller pockets are still active, kind of doing their own thing, but there's like that one connection point or, or group of people who are kind of linked back to the, the upstream. So not sure if that's helpful or not, but it's definitely something I've seen in, in Fedora. It is, I don't suppose this is documented at all. Is it at Fedora? I'd love to read about it too. Yeah, I, I don't know if like the thinking is documented as much as the structure, but I there is some stuff in place. I okay. I think I agree with Justin, and I think even if it open stack, uh, the open infra community, they have a, a large pool of this user's community. They have different layers of interactions and operations. And then they try to make this uh, at different scales. Now, the, the the good thing around this kind of users community, it's like you already identified these three regions. As they keep growing bigger, then you see the need of other space which could be created. For example, if you take the scientific uh, community, some will really be open source upfront. Some will really be one that are coming to use the space to, to, to develop because a lot of these communities are inner sources. They have not really become fully open source, but are learning to go the open source ways. Other corporations like Microsoft that we really know are proprietary, but they are heavily involved with open source these days. So they can also become part of this kind of initiative to gain. So by opening it in this way, we really get more feasibility. And I think they are the ones to do like preaching the, to evangelize what we are doing more. And this is really the kind of philosophy I really was, I proposed, like I was just thinking about this year. We've done a lot of great things, but now we need to spread the word in a very organized way. And I just think this fall in, falls in line. So it's a very great idea to me. Perfect one. <laughs> Excellent. It was probably your idea that, <laughs> that brought us to Armstrong. So uh, that's awesome. Um, and I, I agree. I mean, so um, I guess two points, Justin, if you do have anything, I would love to see it from Fedora. And then um, I agree, Armstrong, and I think there just seems to be general agreement that these user communities are ways for us to get the word out about chaos in a, in a really organized way um, and to also have the artifacts that we have in the chaos project be put into to real practice in these different communities. Um, Kevin, to your question, I, I did wonder about the app ecosystem. I'm not terribly familiar with it, but I had just had that thought as well. So I've been a couple times. It's pretty different than our other working groups. Um, so I don't I don't know. I haven't been in a while, so I don't know what it's like this, at this point. I, I do think that's a user community rather than okay. a working group. So maybe maybe we can include them in the yeah, yeah. the discussion as user communities. Yep, right on. Yeah, I don't I think there are others kind of that are out there as well. One, Elizabeth had talked about event organizers as a user community, because we do a lot of project badging. Mm -hmm. Um and another was just open source project community managers that would have to be scoped a little bit. And then to your second question, Kevin, the difference between science and university. So I think a lot, there are a lot of scientific open source, um, open source projects that are not necessarily associated with universities. Um, and then the, from the university side, I think a lot of the questions are also about how um, to recognize faculty work or student work around open source, like what would be the metrics to identify um, that type of work from folks? Would it be helpful to think of it as open science community management versus university OSPO? For which one, the purple one or the green one? So the, the purple one, it sounds to me like you're talking about university OSPOs. It is, yeah. It's it's, then, it's particularly tied to that OSPO plus plus effort. Yeah, and then the yeah. the green one. It sounds to me like you're more talking about kind of open science uh, community management. 
So it's it's more at the the project level, whereas the, yeah. the university one is more about the uh, the open source program offices. Yes, that, I mean yes. So we can yes certainly work on the names that would be clear because uh, otherwise there there's probably overlap between those two. Yeah, well, and right. There's overlap <laughs> probably between all of them. And maybe to the point of, I think, Justin, like a monthly meeting with the project managers between each one of these communities, just to talk about where is um, where there's an opportunity to coordinate work and, and where um, that overlap might exist. So, okay. Um, and then what are people's thoughts to Kevin's question about the liaisons being an elected or an appointed role in the project? The person who can help kind of carry that conversation from the user communities to the chaos project. If I can chip in math, I think I agree with Kevin on that part. But the thing now it's from the beginning, I can trust your management to appoint people. Then we see how they go. As the community gets uh, more involving, more contribution, then they can now go in for election because election should really be some, you know, there are several ways of conducting elections and no perfect way exists. You go with the condenser, the borderline, all these things, they have flaws. But appointment at some point on time, it's just one way of doing it. You can you can choose some people with the, the top management level just to appoint some people from the beginning, mm -hmm. give them some assignment and some mandate, then we see how it go. Then at some point, we now come with, with we see and observe what has been going, it will give informed our decisions. If we are going now to election or thing like anything, we'll have a baseline. Okay. Uh, yeah. we, we could make a, uh... We could make the common working group the point of connection for those groups, and then the uh, the liaisons could come from the common working group and, and report back to the common working group. I, yeah, so I, um, yes. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we don't want to demand two meetings for the liaisons every, well, I guess it'd be every other week, it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, and we kind of, we do, we would need to at least have them attend Something. For the OSPO user community working those meetings yeah. to help with just to help <laughs> to yeah. their questions and point people in. but then yes they do need to connect with kind of a some spot in this in this arrangement the chaos arrangement down below and common does seem to be the place where that um, connection is starting to land just because that's where we can originate metrics and metrics models. Um, the other thought, I think Kevin, that came up yesterday was um, like bi-weekly updates or something like that at the community call would be another option from the liaisons. Yeah, I mean, my only question was just, you know, what can we do to not make it an unquote? And with the liaisons, like Don is a liaison and Anna's a liaison in the hospital case. Is that nope. right? That's not right. So All they right. are project managers. So they just help coordinate that one meeting. Okay. And then the liaison would be, for example, me. And I would attend yeah. the OSPO. I would ensure that I attend this OSPO user community meeting as well as the necessary chaos meetings to help with that. Is that or yeah. it would be a volunteer, or it would be it would be looking at the list here. It could be you know it could be Anita or Mary Blessing or Armstrong or Kevin or Justin, like somebody who's familiar with the processes of chaos. And we would have to ask that person to attend, for example, the university user community, as well as at least one meeting, you know, the common working group meeting or the, or the community call to talk about just those points yeah. of connection. And just to add also, Matt, I think in any of the user community, what whoever they choose to appoint or you see fit to appoint should really have some, some skills or knowledge aligned with that community. For mm -hmm. example, if you take somebody who has never known how a university is structured, okay. yes. they kind of appoint that person is misalignment. Yes, so, I agree. Yeah. They don't. I think they have to have it at the least an interest in learning <laughs> and at the yeah, best. Yeah 
some some experience. Yeah, because when they'll be attending meetings, the level of discussion at that space will be high level. Okay. Yep, agreed. And that's what the liaisons, I think, provide as and well. The terms they were going to use. Yeah, go ahead, Mary Blessing. Mm -hmm. well, I can't quite hear you, so you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, no, I said I just agree with what Armstrong is oh, okay. saying. Gotcha. Yeah, and the terms they are going to use, um, the communication is going to be on the high level. Yep. Right. No, I, I think, okay, this is great. Yeah. This is really good. Um, let's see. I don't think I had any other comments on that. Um, thank you for your feedback. Are there any other comments from people with respect? To, oh, I guess maybe one last thing. I, I don't know what you all think of the term user community. I, um, I had thought about, okay, so one option was working group, just because that's what we have in the chaos project. The other was user group. And then I just, I settled on user community. I thought it felt a little bit more welcoming to people who might want to participate just in that, in that contextual discussion in each of the respective circles. Working group seemed kind of like <laughs> for the chaos, like, like what we're doing here. Do people have thoughts on the words? I think for me, it's quite explanatory user community because these are the people like the downstreams. They are the people who actually try to make use in their use cases in that particular space. Okay. So right I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's well explained, except anybody has a different thoughts, but to me, it's perfectly uh, cool the way it okay. is. Right on. Uh, Justin? Yeah, to me, user community felt a little strange just because when I think of like a user and community, I'm thinking of like a software deliverable. And I was talking with folks at FOSS Backstage Berlin on Monday and Tuesday, talking about chaos or when it would come up. I feel like there's some general confusion with folks who are outside that sometimes they think chaos is just the software piece. So they think of Grimoire Lab, they think of Augur, and like that's what they think chaos is, or they know the working groups and the metrics, and they think that's what chaos is and not the software. So I, I feel like user community could be really confusing depending on how much you know about chaos and the, and the project. So like I put I said like advocates is one option just because it, to me that seems more of like advocating for how you use the metrics because I see I do see it a little bit more for the metrics end but it could be about software like OSPO like using Augur or Grimoire Lab but you're probably tying it into the metrics piece. I also like what what Kevin put in here like maybe some like steering committee or steering council. Um, I guess that might imply a little more decision-making authority, though. When I when I think of like a like a steering committee, um, I don't know. There, there's definitely a couple different ways to spin it, but I do feel like that user word is a little overloaded. If that makes sense. Sure. I mean, were you suggesting like advocate community? That seems like or no community. Yeah. Okay. Advocate community could work. I, I do like keeping the word community in there because I, I do see it being a little more like a self-organized group within the larger chaos realm versus saying like a word like a committee because that to me implies some kind of decision making I like, like a bunch of I like that community yeah hmm. yeah so I think I, community. Nice. My, my only worries with the advocate would mean like we are you know like we have something, then we ourselves are going there to tell them that this is what we stand for. That will really be the downside of using this kind of advocacy. But now we want them to create that space, a kind of interface. It depends if we want to go with loosely coupling or tightly coupling. But from what Math has been explaining, I see a kind of loosely coupling where we have a liaison. So we are not really imposing in that space. 
we are navigating to see how collaboration could work. So in that space, that's why I still see user community really like holes because we don't want to bring in any form of a kind of uh, policing in any space. Well, I would say, I do think we're asking for some direction from these communities though. So if we're the way we're kind of restructuring, we want, we're, we're asking them to come in and tell us what they're doing or what they need. So we are asking for some, a little bit of direction from them. I mean, very much, very much the case. You know, we do need to listen because as a, the liaison, I expect that there will be, as I mentioned earlier, new metrics and new metrics models that that would be requested and the liaison has to bring those back. Um, so that's fair. I put collaborative community as well as a possible listening to this kind of like either of those second two. And because I mean, those also come with some feeling of action in them too, which I think is building on what Kevin said, what we're trying to encourage. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'm just, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going kind of uh, working group by working group to circulate this idea. And it's been great because every different working group has <laughs> different, different comments <laughs> about uh, things to add. So I, I do appreciate that. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, any, any last comments on this? All right, I'm just going to kind of wrap up a few things here. So um, I just wanted to say the newcomer experience, I just wanted to put this in the notes. I think it's ready to be released. So I'll ping Elizabeth on that. Um, and then I just wanted to talk real or get your thoughts real briefly. So we've been working on event location inclusivity as a metric that is being released. So this one is, is done. Um, and this is gonna be associated with the next round of the um, badging, like associated with events. And so you can take a look at this. We also have a metric called event locations, which is this metric. And I was wondering how people saw these as different. So this is about global audience. And this is um, really about marginalized groups. So they are different. I'm wondering if if maybe we should rename as we're working on this, because this is an in-progress metric event location, something a little bit more um, helpful, because we have event location inclusivity, event location global location. <laughs> that's, that's not great, but whatever. Do people have maybe some thoughts on this just to, articulate this metric a little bit better. Or no. Uh, I think it, I think this metric needs to exist. Yep. Uh, but I also think it's a fairly, it's a fairly trivial metric, right? So it's, it should be really easy to write, because it's really just about uh, kind of identifying the location and counting it, right? What do you think of this for a title? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. Okay, as opposed to, I just wanted to differentiate, <clears throat> excuse me, differentiate these two, because for a while, this one was just called event location. And then right. in, in the in the description, I would, I would just have a really simple description. Uh, so that that first sentence actually fits in the objective. Uh, Matt, just a quick question why Kevin is coming. Why did you use the word global here? Uh, just because it was kind of in the objectives. I think this is about trying to uh, encourage event organizers to host things around the world. So they're not- but just that's already captured inclusivity, right? Is it? I 
don't think it is. Because then uh, this, uh, because honestly, this should really be one and the same thing. When we no, are talking I... about the globalness of this event and inclusivity of the event location, that inclusiveness in terms of event should mean you consider each global location with some degree of equal or equal consideration. That's inclusivity. I think you're yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think the, the difference is the event location inclusivity is about inclusivity. Uh, the event location global, the way I think Matt and Armstrong are describing it, is more about equity. So maybe it's maybe this one is event location equity rather than uh, inclusivity. This one that I'm looking at right now. Yeah. And so when we when we talk about it from a, a point of equity, that's are we are we having are we having events in locations that are uh, uh, are, are all of them happening just in the United States or are we spreading them out globally? Right? Are we is there mm -hmm. an equitable distribution of events? That, I, that feels to me like that's what Armstrong was was talking about. Yeah, because this kind of thing, if you look into most uh, like Linux uh, found the Linux uh, open source summit, you look into most of these communities, they have a kind of map that we could say it's not really inclusive in a way. But when you go into what is, there are some other terminologies that brings in this kind of event, sponsorship. So when we are designing this kind of metric, we should keep both at, in mind. For example, if Red Hat is sponsoring an event, if uh, uh, Kubernetes is sponsoring an event, if Microsoft is sponsoring an event, they will, they will solicit a location where their interest and their, their users, let's say med might be more, uh, it might be more open for them for their users or their investment. They cannot just say, okay, let's go to India, let's just go to uh, Africa, to South Africa for going sick. So now how do we try to say, okay, we want a kind of neutral thing to, you know, might be the places where they, they, they don't go there more. There are other factors that we can also address in the metrics. It might be a little bit confusing. Uh, I mean, sorry, it might be a little bit tricky to really come up with a total balance of things because everybody will go where interest at some point mm -hmm. is, yeah i will not just take an event to let's say to brazil when i know people will just come there for fashion parade not really for investors who not go towards the purpose okay yeah okay okay this is good um we're at time Thank you for the really quick feedback on yeah. Kevin and Armstrong. Appreciate it. Can you uh, share the Can you share the link to this real quick in the the community chat? Uh, yeah. So I'm wondering if there's an element of event location equity in regards to where the majority of the community is located. And then. I'll just comment that in there because I don't think we have time to discuss it. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> the second time it's happened this week to me. Kevin, are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Okay, I just put it in the chat. Sorry, my Zoom just exploded. So yeah, I got it. Thank you. Yep. Okay, now we're done. Good. Thanks for the feedback, everybody. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Thank you, man. Um, see you. See you on some of these more meetings. Bye bye. Bye. bye.
Oh, hi, Kevin. Is the meeting over? Oh, yep. It must. I it must be over. For a moment. Oh, I. I think they usually they just close it and the, the meeting ends. But I think they had made. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think they made me the co-host when it started, so uh, apparently I need to end it. How are oh, you? Uh, How are you doing, Mary Blessing? Oh, well, yeah. 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 I'm good. And you? Good. Good. Yeah, I'm doing good, Kevin. How I'm about good. you? I'm 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 well, thank you. Okay, um, have so, a good day. Yep, I will I will talk to you later. Bye. Oh yeah, awesome. <laughs>